Welcome, welcome to Homekeepers. Hey, come right on in. So glad to be with you today. It's always, I consider it a great privilege and an honor that we can connect this way wherever you are. And if you've never seen the show before, hope you'll hang around. And I always like to give out some hugs to those regular, regular viewers for so many years, how we appreciate you. And we try to bring you information that's going to make your home better, you know, in your relationships and anything that really has to do with the home, and that is anything, anything and everything. And of course, so we like to deal with uh, health on this program, and it's, it's very gratifying to get your feedback from some of the information that we give out. You try it, and it works. And today, I have a guest who's been on, I think I checked about three years ago, and at the time, I thought, I wish we could just do another show with him, but it wasn't feasible at the time, but he's back. And that's Dr. Mark Pedersen. Uh, he is the chief formulator for the Fruit of the Spirit uh, product that we offer here from time to time. And he has written this book. There's no book in the world like this, I'm positive. Nutritional Herbology, a reference guide to er herb herbs, not herbs, and um, the information is just so detailed and unending. It's just a great educational book. I'm so glad to have him back. Problem is we need about a three hour show, but we'll do the best we can. And I am going to join Stephanie and we've been getting different messages on this recipe because it's a zucchini onion pie. And I, some, some of the crew says, no way and others willing to try it, we'll see. Uh, Susan, our floor director, is very happy because it's a vegetarian dish. And so we'll put it together and you can uh, kind of make up your own mind about that. I do want to offer you again, Fruit of the Spirit, this wonderful, wonderful product that we haven't really gotten into the weeds recently on it, on the, some of the detail. And so maybe some of our viewers have never even seen this or gotten acquainted with it, but uh, we're offering this for buy one, get one free, and that price is $29, and it uh, depends on your, uh, you know, if you want to go auto ship, but after you hear Dr. Pedersen talk about it, uh, and there, there's really no product like it, that I'll, that's all I can say, that's just nothing like it, that's had the care and the, the intense scrutiny, and uh, we'll tell you more about it, but uh, if you want to get the number that was uh, on the screen and so forth, and uh, we'll give you a whole lot more detail. But now I'm, she's back in town. Back she again. was gone. <laughs> she's a good daughter, this Stephanie. Yes. Um, you drove 10 hours one way for your daddy's birthday. Mm -hmm. And then I drove 10 hours back. <laughs> <laughs> and Actually, how was took, the party? It was wonderful. We had a great time. Did you cook? We cooked out. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, the, you know, it's usually very hot there, but it didn't get over 74 degrees while you they were there. You were there a perfect there. week. Was I was wonderful. watching the weather. Yes. yes. We and that's Tennessee. Outside. Yeah, we One of my outside. favorite states. Wonderful. It's beautiful. And now we're back. Yeah. And a zucchini pie. I think the pie part is what throws everyone off. You can't mm -hmm. call something pie that has yeah. zucchini and, and onion. And what I want to do is, um, <laughs> yeah, that's true. I wonder yeah. who came up with it. Yeah. I'm going to just make these a little bit smaller okay, and you can I put have, together. Yep, I have three eggs. I have. Um, then I'll go talk to Dr. Pedersen with yes. all this onion smell yes. in my hand. I have um, three onions. I have Parmesan cheese. I have canola oil. I have parsley, garlic, zucchini, baking mix, and salt and pepper. And we're just going to mix all this together. And the amounts will be in the recipe, of course, if anybody wants it. They can ask you for it. And yeah, get it for they can free. email us. Because I love free, you no. know? Yeah. Um, I did budget that whole trip. Did you? Yes, I was and in fact, about that. I, I over budgeted almost because I thought it was going to take a lot more in, in gas for the car and stuff like that. So I actually came in under budget, which was. In case you're wondering what we're talking about, was it two years ago or so mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. Stephanie and her husband started looking around and saying, look, we make enough money, but we got too much debt. Yep. And they took it on. Yeah. And so this includes things like this yes, trips and budgeting you know so i can pay cash for everything no more credit no more none of that um this is parmesan tree and you know cheese. what she's a different person 
it makes a whole different world when I you're not in debt and you can sleep Stephanie, at night. That's personal. She's a pretty up person, but I remember times when you your countenance. Bible oh, talks about the that's countenance. That's because it's, you know, being in debt is so oppressive. I yeah. Mean, it's just, it really takes everything out of you. And she got into the coupon thing. Yeah. I haven't seen her on TV yet with the extreme coupon oh, people. Oh, no, I'm not crazy. No. <laughs> <laughs> they are a little bit. Yeah. Because what are you going to do with 50 bottles of salad yeah, dressing? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not crazy. I just like to save money, so... And I don't have a lot of space in my house, and I'm not taking up every <laughs> nook and cranny with stuff, so... And you're not going to go in debt to add an addition yeah, to hold no, your salad no, no. dressing. This is can uh, canola oil I'm putting in. Yeah, I'm wondering if that's necessary, because olive oil is more yeah, healthy. Yeah, olive oil is more healthy, or even, I wonder if we should put what coconut oil reason? in. That's even more healthy. I was thinking, healthy. I'm using coconut oil for everything nowadays. Well, you know, some of these ingredients are probably old-time ingredients. Uh -huh. you, know, you know what I mean? Like, they used to make them like this, and now coconut oil is so... so. Oh, coconut oil, I mean, you can use it for a night cream yeah. or... I use it for my face, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so I have um, zucchini cut up that we're going to put in. I have salt and pepper. You want to spray that, I think that's that, three cups of zucchini. Mm -hmm. Salt and you need and a deep, kind of a deep dish yeah. um, pie. Mm -hmm. pie. So I got to see my brother from Pennsylvania over the weekend. I haven't seen him. We figured it out 12 years. Oh, that's terrible. So that I said, we're making a pact. That will never, ever happen yeah. again. Yeah. Ever. Yeah, I said that a lot of reasons why families get... Yeah, well, my husband has seen him because he goes up there and goes hunting, but it was just never a option for me at that time to go so I'm planning on going next year if not the end of this year now if you see this okay, is really this is baking this yeah. is like biscuit mix That's like biscuit like a biscuit but when we were mixing this up boy this is odd looking then we said okay this is not a quiche yeah it's this is not a quiche so if it's you not, think that I don't want to I don't like calling it a pie let's call it something else <laughs> <laughs> that throws everyone's world off pie is sweet and also if you're not into uh you know, the vegetarian thing. Yeah. You can add some chopped oh, up gosh. ham to ham, this. Yes. Sausage. Anything like that. You could have a meal. Like they say, whatever floats your boat. Exactly. I'm just going to let you be the taster. It's a little too early for me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have this kind of thing for breakfast? No. You I'm going to get a bite of them. I'll pie. trust you. Hey. Is now, it delicious? This is my kind of food, so... I can't speak for everyone. And then you just bake it for like 30 minutes mm -hmm. at what, 350? Mm. I think that's good. Yeah, this could, and this could be a, a great little side dish. You know, you're mm -hmm. always, I'm always looking for different side dishes. Mm -hmm. This is good. It's called a, a zucchini and onion pie, and the onions are not real prominent in there. We have one of our crew here that doesn't like onions. He's not a fan. It's, yeah. So, if you would like this recipe, just let us know. You can write to me. You can email me. We'll get it right out to you. And if this is something that interests you, I'm telling you, for me, it really tastes good. And maybe she'll take I'll a taste later, later in the day. <laughs> Stay with me. If you haven't met Dr. Mark Pedersen, I want you to meet him. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen. Or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. I am absolutely delighted to welcome back to the program Dr. Mark Pedersen. He's from Utah, one of my favorite states. I, uh, I remember speaking at Park City a couple times. That's a world-class resort. It is. A lot of very rich, famous people have homes there, yeah, right? Summer and summer and winter, it doesn't yeah. matter. And uh, if we get a conversation going in the makeup room or here before we start, it's just unending interest <laughs> to me. And, and so I'm so glad to have you back. You have uh, degrees in both chemistry and geology. Uh, research chemist specializing in herbal chemistry and 
Uh, what in the world prompted your interest in that, do you think? When I was a young man, I got a disease called Crohn's disease, and the doctor said, you know, plan your life short, there's not much we can do. So That's I encouraging. Wanted, <laughs> so I wanted to find something, and 35 years later, I'm still around and, and still very active and, and very happy, so. Um, you and I were talking about Deborah Ray. Have you met her? I have. Yeah. Yes. She had Crohn's. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, it's much more common today. And it's encouraging yeah. to know that there are steps you can take. Absolutely. Nutritional steps. I, I was thinking of your uh, onion casserole. I don't, it's not a casserole. <laughs> it's not a pie. It's, yeah. It seemed like a quiche to me, but uh -huh. yeah. you can categorize it how you want. The way you measure an antioxidant is by the length of time it stays without having to be refrigerated and not rotting. So if you think about an onion, it can stay out for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. It is a wonderful antioxidant. The trouble is, nobody wants to eat them every day. Yeah. And, <coughs> and so. Yeah, you can, if we, when you cook them, do they lose that? No. no, it's very, very stable, very, very stable to heat. It's a, it's a, it's a marvel thing. A banana on the opposite side turns black within a week. Uh -huh. And uh, that shows you that it doesn't have much antioxidant power. And That's so, interesting. So yeah. there are some things that are very powerful antioxidants, some things are not. An apple, for example. We'll talk about apples. We'll talk about grapes. Grapes survive as raisins for years. They yeah, found and them apples ancient. survive. Apples survive. I, I try to eat an yeah. apple every day because when I was a kid, I learned yeah. that poem. Yep. Apple a day keeps the doctor away. It does. I think there's some truth in that. It absolutely does. So. I want to talk about this book that is unending and so very, very uh, interesting. Um, what, what kind of a, a trajectory do you follow in this to get all the information? Because you have information about every herb that maybe is known to man, but um, the good side, the bad side, how I'm it can be used. I'm probably more a medical historian than anything else. You go back into cultures, you find out what their history and their experience was. They developed expertise based on experience. So generation after generation, especially when they wrote them down, you would find out what was good for what. And they had some traditions that were, you know, not backed up by medical science, but a lot of things come from the culture. We're going to talk a lot about the Bible fruits. Uh -huh. uh, the Bible mentions uh, 130 different ways that you can use plants for medicines. So that yeah. goes back over 2,000 years, or well, 6,000 years. Certainly, yeah. <clears throat> um, 4,000 years to Moses and... And, uh, and so you study these cultures, some very, very old. Very, very, very old. what they did. And, and Fruit of the Spirit was great because we got to study the, the plants that were from the Bible, the Mediterranean region. And uh, I'd done some with South America, I'd spent some projects in, in different parts of the world, but I'd never spent that part in the, in the Middle East. And that was really fascinating to me, not only as a Christian, but also as a scientist and being able to see what they used. And so we, we founded the drink basically yeah. on uh, grapes and apples. And those were some that lasted a very long period of time, had that antioxidant appeal, uh, not scientifically, but mm -hmm. just culturally. And so. Well, um, I understand that Craig Keeland, this was his idea. Yeah. Uh, he has been in the health business for as long as I've known him, which is well over 25 years. And he actually, I'm not trying to spiritualize this, but he got the idea of sitting in church. I think uh, so, yeah. And uh, kind of got excited and he came to you and I understand he said, we just want the best product, not going to worry about cost containment. Exactly. And it was one of the first things we did because we use not juices. There's a bunch of juices that are on the market. You can buy acai, you can buy uh, noni juice, all that kind of stuff. Juices are the extract. They don't have any of the, of the antioxidant power. Uh, the real claim to fame for the fruit of the spirit is it has five servings of fruits and vegetables in it. Now, most of us get one and a half a day. And one of those is ketchup because we go to the fast food. <laughs> That's your tomato, right? <laughs> yeah. And so, so we really need those antioxidants in the form of whole fruits and vegetables. So mm -hmm. we make whole fruit purees. We got them from all over the world. And we had to manage a whole bunch of different things. For example, uh, we don't use alfalfa hay, but if you look at alfalfa hay and they cut it, it starts out green and two days later it's brown. So mm -hmm. all the antioxidant potential is gone in two days. Many of our fruits are the same way. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to harvest them, and we can only harvest them twice a year. 
products available 365 days a year. So how do you get it from the, from the plant and the, and the living being into a bottle and, and preserve the essence? And so we went through some flash freezing process, some freeze drying process, some whole fruit grinding and maceration. We wanted to keep the seed and the skin, everything that was the essence so the, of the, the plant. So the seeds and the skin and the and that sounds, pulp, that everything sound is in this. It doesn't sound palatable, but we made it palatable. It's so, palatable. It's so smooth, you're not gonna get that pulpy taste that a lot of people don't like. And so. I understand you personally are there for every run. Absolutely, and that's uh, not always easy. And, yeah, and you're sitting there saying that the consistency is right and the flavor Yep. and all this uh, and also it has minerals from the Dead Sea is that correct it does we, we we looked around the cultures of the region and we says all right what is the healing and the energizing properties so not only the healing properties and, and we also we you know we started with you know briars and thorns that's what the Bible mentions the most when it talks so about we're, plants. we're drinking briars and thorns <laughs> but if you think about it we've got the hawthorn which was the the crown that cro that uh, the, the uh, people put on Christ's head. Those hawthorn berries are very good for the heart and the circulatory system. We also have the sea buckthorn, which is another thorn. We have the goji berry or the lysium fruit, which is native, it was a native briar. So we have briars and thorns, literally. And that's what, you know, the scriptures always mention things that we have to overcome, the briars and thorns. When Adam got kicked out of the Garden of Eden, mm -hmm. he faced a world of briars and thorns. Well, we're using them to our advantage, just like God always has a back door for everything he, he uh, gives us a challenge with. So. Yeah, you know, the first thing I noticed in the lineup of ingredients was frankincense and myrrh. Okay. And <clears throat> I didn't know that you ate those. <laughs> <laughs> well, originally the, the frankincense was an incense. It was a, it's an offering to God, turned to smoke. The, the body turns to spirit as we die and, and as our prayers go up to heaven. So there is a certain amount of that in the incense. But frankincense and myrrh, they were the Advil, the aspirin, the uh, ibuprofen of the day. And that's what they used for joint pains. Uh, in the case of the, of the baby Jesus, the mothers were offered frankincense and myrrh to overcome the uh, the uh, birthing pain. Labor pains. Yeah, labor pains. So that's better than what they used to call a saddle black bo saddle block or an epidural or something like this. Or well, they didn't have any of that technology. So. No, and mm -hmm. um, a lot of ether, that kind of thing's not good for the baby. So. Well, they, they didn't have. They literally didn't have anything, didn't have anything uh, along those ways, and so. These were prized just like gold. So gold, frankincense, and myrrh were what the wise men brought, and they brought them as offerings because they were the most highly prized, well, painkillers wow. in our day. I mean, look at the drug yeah. trade. It's all yeah. painkillers. <laughs> that, is, hmm. that is really just thought-provoking to me that um, the gifts that were chosen to bring to Jesus, God chose those. Absolutely, so, yeah. absolutely. And he, he looked out for the, the mother. Yeah. He did. If you uh, just tuned in, I'm talking to Dr. Mark Pedersen, who is the formulator of Fruit of the Spirit, and we're offering that for uh, $29. The information's on your screen. If you choose auto ship, uh, you buy one, get one free. So why don't you write down that telephone number, and um, we'll keep going here, and you can learn much more about it. The interesting thing to me was uh, the audience, most of them are pretty familiar with Deborah Ray, and when this was presented to her, she um, was pretty sure she wouldn't like it because, you know, she had radio and television shows, mm -hmm. and you have to be very careful what you put your stamp of approval on. Absolutely. Absolutely. So she uh, probably has, you know, <clears throat> seen this movie before, and uh, she was uh, convinced it might be just another, um, somebody trying to get her to pitch it, and she was absolutely blown away by it. And uh, I, th I would think the same you with your background and all that, you don't put your name, your stamp of approval on, approval on everything that comes down the pike. I don't get the opportunity to work on such a great project. When you look at five servings of fruits and vegetables, absolutely an amazing feat. It's in one serving, it's in one ounce, highly concentrated, yes. very convenient, and uh, uh, most people take the essence out based on price. Mm -hmm. And this product never did. And, and I really appreciate Craig for doing that. And the, the product is world class. Uh, we, go, we go to great lengths to get the, the crops from all over the world. Uh, 
mostly the Mediterranean is where they started. You know, mm -hmm. the aloe vera comes from Egypt and the desert regions. Uh, all these things are in that general region, but they only grow once a year. So we go to the, we go to South American climates and we, we harvest grapes and apples in the opposite half of the year. And then we, we take them and make them the whole fruit purees. We store them in a flash frozen condition so that as they're used. Flash we, frozen is just seconds, isn't it? It's just absolutely instantaneously. And it does, does two things. It takes away anything pathogenic, meaning any bacteria or bugs. So that sometimes they talk about whole milk being pasteurized and homogenized, and, and that's a bad thing. But it does keep us from getting some of the sicknesses that go around at times. So, so we do have to we have to do that, and it and it makes it a wonderful natural presentation. The brightness of the color, you'll notice that. Mm -hmm. You'll notice the brightness of the flavor, and the thing that we did in this one is it's only the fruits that are flavors. There's no added flavors, no added sugars, no added artificial sweeteners, no preservatives, and that, that makes for a very different product than you would normally see on the on the grocery store shelves. You know, I uh, I went to my niece's house for. Thanksgiving a couple years ago, and I like to have communion around the table before we eat Thanksgiving. So I asked her if that was okay, if brought it, mm -hmm. and um, we stood around the table and we thanked God and we we had yeah. the communion and we used the fruit of the spirit for that. <laughs> and, and I think that very very good, appropriate, very, yeah. very appropriate thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now let's talk a little bit about the absolute perfect time to harvest. Okay. You can be too early and you can be too late, correct? And so this is why we use this flash freezing process. We try to, within two days of the time that it's harvested, we get at it. We can either grind it up and macerate it into the very fine, uh, smooth texture that we want, or we can freeze it whole. And sometimes we can't get to it with processing, so we freeze it whole, we bring it in, and then we process it right at the end. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot of people talk about whether it's frozen or concentrate or, or, or whatever. Uh -huh. These are not concentrates. These are whole fruit purees oh. processed as close to the farms and the, the harvest as we can. First time I heard Deanna Naylor, who is the president of this company now, talk about the, the seeds were in it. Yes. And that made me think, um, what do you think of the newer science, maybe the last more than 10 years or so? Everybody jumping up and down because they made something seedless. That's not good, is it? Yeah, Nate, yeah some of the oranges, they Yeah, they nature no puts seeds. seeds in them. Yeah, so they can't reproduce, which is God's first commandment. <laughs> 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 Multiply and replenish. If you can't do that, you really... Does it diminish the, uh, the content of the Yeah, the, antio the antioxidant content goes down. And so there's absolutely a, a difference there. And so the seed becomes a very important thing. Uh, you talked earlier about coconut oil and how, how mm -hmm. popular that is. Do you know why coconut oil is so popular? It's the only natural oil that doesn't have to be emulsified in order to be absorbed. So it actually acts as, as, a, as, a, as a tractor trailer, if you will, and draws essential nutrients into the body, especially the fat-soluble ones, the vitamin A and beta-carotene, the vitamin D, the vitamin E, vitamin K. Those are fat-soluble vitamins, and so coconut oil doesn't need any help it becomes the helper and draws things in. So uh, this doesn't have coconut oil in it, right. but that's what really makes coconut oil but so coconut popular. But coconut oil takes heat better too, even than olive oil. It does, it does. I've, I've used it for just about everything now, if I saute yeah. or bake or anything. Yeah. So coconut oil is a saturated, more saturated fat than olive oil, but the beautiful part of it is, is that you can, you can rub it on your skin mm -hmm. and things will absorb through the skin with it. And so I've, I've made poultices many, many times. Uh, even vitamin C poultices, where you just apply that with the coconut oil, and it becomes a very useful vehicle. So, uh, let's see. How long have you been in this business? Uh, I guess uh, since I was 25, and I'm now about 55. So that gives me 30 years in the yeah, business. Yeah. Um, are you pretty encouraged that the word is kind of getting out? I, I know when I got interested a long time ago, when my son was diagnosed with. Uh, juvenile onset diabetes at the age of 12 and there wasn't much there no. and they they absolutely called anybody who thought that a health nut and and they portrayed the owners of health food stores you know they kind of hippie and wore burlap <laughs> either either hippies or grandmothers yeah <laughs> one of the two and, and uh, but 
In your opinion, has it come a long way? People are beginning to get educated? It is. And, and if you look at the financial markets, guess who's buying in now? The big financial markets are buying into the health food business. The health food nuts were correct. Yeah. Probably in everything but marijuana. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, yeah. But past that, they really do. Antioxidants is diabetes. Antioxidants is inflammation of any kind. Joint pain. That's all about inflammation. Even Alzheimer's is about inflammation. So whatever part of the body is inflamed and, and hot, so to speak, uh, this, type, this is the type of a product that will battle that. Yeah, I, I want to tell you again that we're offering this wonderful product. We've offered it uh, for uh, several years now, but actually um, haven't spent a whole show on it before. And this is available. Uh, buy one, get one free for that $29 price if you choose the auto ship. Uh, so make sure you make note of that number on the screen uh, because there's really, could you safely say there's nothing like this product no, out there? No, honestly, honestly, there's no whole fruit purees that are on the market. Mm -hmm. And certainly there's not one that, with Bible fruits. Mm -hmm. That one gives you an added benefit. Yeah. I have to tell you one story because yeah. we, we digress from the minerals. Uh -huh. The minerals are highly present in the uh, Dead Sea region mm -hmm. of the Mediterranean. And why is that? Why is that important to this product? Uh, when you get into a hot climate, your metabolism has to go up to try to cool your body, which is the opposite of what you would think. But in order to increase your metabolism, you have to have trace minerals. And so we added trace minerals from the Dead Sea to this to increase its ability to be energizing in a natural way, not in a caffeine stimulant way, but in a natural, um, provide the body the building blocks necessary to create the energy it needs. Well, I know Dr. Uh, John Young, who's uh, very regular on this program, he was jumping up and down when he saw the minerals in there. <laughs> yeah, he, he uses them for two reasons. Yeah. One, one, for energy right off, but two, as an alkalinizing, balancing. It helps to balance the systems of the body. Mm -hmm. So that's a whole different use of the minerals. And we really weren't thinking of that when we put the product together, mm -hmm. but it became a side benefit that Dr. Young really discovered. Yeah, there's nothing like this one, friends. Uh, there's a lot of... Uh, things out there that you can choose from, but I don't know of any product that has been so meticulously uh, put together uh, with so much thought, and I hope that you'll take advantage of it. We are out of time, but uh, let me remind you that we are working here real hard to help you with everything in your home, you know, especially your spiritual life, your relationships, but also your finance, your health, everything that uh, can go, just put it together to make you a a truly victorious, healthy, spiritual life. That's what we want. Please join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN programs and then on homekeepers. 